uh, back before the Hastings Crossing Day. So he's got good knowledge around some successes and failures in the neighborhood and what we need right now. So, boom. Yay! Thank you. Do you have a question? <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, I, would, I would like to donate this back. Just the feeling of winning is good enough for me <gasps> and then have someone well, else. Well, thank you. Yay! Yay! Cool. <laughs> I thought you were for change so we can split up into uh, loonies. Yeah. One of the issues in our economy is that the dollar doesn't turn around three or four times. And lo and behold, <laughs> we're starting this right no, no, in okay. minute four. Keep money flowing. That's right. Thank yeah. you so much. Good karma. Good okay, karma. We're doing these, we're doing these uh, teaching moments. So everyone figure out what he just said. So he's basically saying one of the challenges of this community is that, especially when workers, uh, and, and, and sometimes they're derided as called poverty pimps, sometimes when workers come into the hood for their work and you know there's so many service agencies and they drive home at night and they pay for their mortgages out in North Van or Surrey or so that money flows out of the hood and so what Hendrick is talking about it's not just service agencies it's, it's business owners business. and so what we're looking at is one way to help our community is to figure out how to get that money coming back in and flowing back in and back in so that we're all getting richer from those same dollars so thank you sister for that teaching Uh, very quickly condense uh, some of uh, how Hastings Crossing Business Improvement Association is trying to do just that. Uh, BIAs are uh, paid for through uh, a levy through property owners and businesses that give us our budget that we can work with. And uh, that allows us a certain amount of stability, which is great, but it also uh, holds us accountable to those businesses and those property owners to really bring value for money in regards to our programming. And so what we try to do with RBIA is uh, we started out very much thinking that uh, in this particular stretch of the downtown east side, we, we, we didn't, uh, well, we felt that if we didn't start a BIA there, some others might have started a BIA that would not have supported as inclusive a model as we wanted to. And so we thought, how can we connect the wants and needs of the property owners and the businesses that are here and bring them that value, while at the same time trying to connect as, as um, uh, meaningfully as possible to the downtown east side uh, residents, the, the uh, residents with barriers to employment, and create job opportunities directly through our programming. And not only that, but we create opportunities for dialogue uh, so that we can create a better understanding between the businesses who often have a stigmatized or um, an obfuscated view of, of perhaps what uh, the low income community is uh, and the strengths and, and the, the amazing assets that are there uh, socially, artistically, and culturally. And, and the low-income community, who uh, in, in some respects, uh, and rightfully so in many, many times, is uh, concerned about things like gentrification and, and investment, development, and all those sorts of things. So trying to bridge that dialogue in the middle there, and throughout, through our programming, connect the wants and needs of the businesses to the capacity of the downtown east side residents to deliver a range of services. And, and one of the key ways of doing that has been connecting with social enterprises. So we had uh, Embers and Mission Impossible up here earlier. Great examples of, of social enterprises. Uh, Potluck was mentioned earlier. Uh, we've got uh, numerous, like the radio station cafe, W2, I believe, is a social enterprise and proper. Uh, and so these are organizations that are driven not just by a, a mandate to generate a profit uh, for themselves or for shareholders, but they're values driven uh, enterprises. And you don't have to be owned by a nonprofit to necessarily be a values driven enterprise. Uh, but in particular, we see that a lot of nonprofit groups have started these social enterprises as a way of creating capacity building experiences for residents or employment opportunities for residents that otherwise might have barriers to the employment market. And so, by trying to connect those two, we have a steady budget that we can relate to that experience of, of self empowerment and, and uh, self capacity. So, so as you mentioned, social enterprises, um, nonprofits that are valued. That run businesses that are value driven. There's also for profit businesses that can have a value driven vision in the world. Yeah. But what are some other models that businesses are sole proprietorship, in which you're a personal business or all the way to the you know, 10, 15, 20, up to possibly thousands of people in the case of the of Europe that own a co op. And that's like a community managed business operation where the profits are shared amongst those members. So one of those uh, er interesting areas is a micro enterprise, which is you know somewhere between that sole proprietor and and and, uh, and a corporation maybe you know they are generally smaller in uh, in nature uh, and they operate on low uh, you know low capital, uh, low startup cost often, 
And think of the carvers that you see on, on the sidewalks here. Like that would be a that would be a micro enterprise. Uh, some of the businesses that are in the hive that uh, they've really um, uh, they've eliminated a lot of those capital costs, those startup costs for the business by having a shared workspace, which is almost like a cooperative model. Do folks know where the, where the hive is? Yes. So just across the street from here, there's about what 25 businesses or so that have shared administration costs and shared space, meeting rooms, all these sort of things. Uh, and those businesses that are in there, for all intents and purposes, are, are I think you know mostly micro enterprises. Doesn't mean they're not making money. It doesn't mean they're not even you know making enough to, to sustain a, a healthy lifestyle. Just means that they're running a pretty small, uh, small, nimble operation where it's not big and capital intensive. Uh, and I do, think do folks know what? Maybe just explain the term capital. Okay, so uh, they don't need a lot of, okay, W2 is fairly capital intensive. We have a, a lot of, you know, uh, we've opening doors here, we've got, you know, all the, the uh, equipment here is, is capital, uh, the, the barista machine, all that stuff that's in there, and, and many people also consider that the money in the bank, uh, the money that flows through as well to be capital. Uh, and then your labor is, is the people. So uh, you might have, in the case of a co-op, you might have a lot of people, you might not have a lot of capital. So if you're a creative co-op that's dealing with like you know design work, maybe your laptop is capital. But uh, aside from that, it's a service that you're providing that is really the money maker for you. Uh, and so I think it, <clears throat> there's other examples in, in a lot of cities where you might have a small lockbox where you know you can come and go as you please, and you, you open it up, and you have maybe you're a painter, maybe you offer some arts and crafts, some jewelry. We'll be hearing from uh, um, a woman Maryland. from Maryland, that's right, who is a uh, um, jewelry designer here. In town, and that would be a micro enterprise. You know, it's uh, not a very capital intensive, but but at the same time, you know, she's an entrepreneur and she's making a go of this thing. So there's a lot of spirit. So how do we enable that through use of our public spaces, through use of, of even you know, partnerships with private uh, businesses, and how can we enable more training and, and more creative space or job space, as it's sometimes called, to to allow residents to flourish in that way? I think that's a really interesting area to look at. So, um, yeah. Any quick questions for Wes? All right, so thank you very much, Russ. Yeah, thanks. Yay! Uh, yeah, Woo! Thank you. If anyone's curious about more of the work that we do, uh, uh, hxbia.com is our website. And I, I would suggest that everyone get um, familiar with all the BIAs in the downtown east side, yeah, frankly. Leo Sally here from Gastown BIA. Uh, what does that mean, BIA? Business Improvement, oh, BIA. Business Improvement Area or sometimes Association. Because the BIAs play a very important role in our local economy and we're all starting to work together more uh, on a lot of, of these shared issues. And, and we're looking for ways to connect with the community uh, in meaningful ways. So, thank you. Woo!